Did you know that in America there were over 300 recorded arm resistant movements? Yes, from the brave warriors of the Bacon Rebellion, the Stono Rebellion, Nat Turner, to the ingenious plots of Denmark Vesey and Gabriel Prosser. We're going to look at one of the largest movements, the Louisiana Uprising of 1811, and how they came very, very close in creating a black republic, a land of freedom, true democracy, and protection from European oppression. Some just refused to die, and so we would struggle and fight. We would continue to use our language when they weren't looking. We would continue to remember our customs. I'm an African, I'm a god, I'm a shanti. I know who I am. They won't take me from me. Some of our people say you will not take my identity. In fact, proof we just say, I'd rather die and have no respect and be a slave and a servant to you. And so they said, no, I'm gonna beat this out of you. Because we were rebellious, we didn't want it. They said, what's your name? And that black man would say, my name, I'm gonna shot thee. He said, you are a nigga. He said, I'm God, I'm Wallace. You'll never change me. And many of our ancestors died, fight, never accepting anything less than being proud, productive African people. Indeed, we fought the entire time. And nothing testifies to this statement more than the armed resistant movement by the enslaved Africans led by Charles Dessalon. In order to truly grasp the brave attempt of our ancestors, we need to understand that there were three ways of resisting capitalistic slavery. Running away to territories like Canada, becoming a maroon, living in the swamps and surviving off of the wildlife and carrying out raids on the plantations to free up others. Number three, overthrow the state. Overthrowing the dictatorship of the slaveholding class. All forms of resisting European imperialists in this capitalistic slave society was extremely dangerous, but the most daring and noblest a combative, daring, direct approach of overthrowing the old oppressive machine, taking away the land from the slave owners without compensation, and turning the land over to be controlled and owned by the true tillers of the land. This is what revolution is. The removing of one class of power and replacing it with the new class or new coalition. And that's just what our brave ancestors of Louisiana attempted in 1811. To accomplish this, Dessalon's strategy was a two-pronged military attack on the city of New Orleans. One prong of the attack was for the enslaved Africans joined with the Maroon communities to move from plantation to plantation along the Mississippi River. They would first fight off the loyal slaves, then slay the slaveholders, and assemble an army as they moved down the river road. They would capture the city of New Orleans and make it the capital of the New Republic. The other prong attack was to involve the enslaved Africans inside of New Orleans, who would at the same time seize the arsenal at Fort St. Charles and distribute the weapons to the arriving slave army. Under Dessalon's directions, New Orleans would serve as the base of a liberated zone where slaves from all over the South could come to gain their freedom. Dessalon and his comrades began the uprising with two slogans, on to New Orleans, and freedom or death. There were no promises, there were no guarantees that it would work, but under this tyranny, it was better to fight than to die under their oppressive rule. Late that evening on the German coast, about 26 miles outside of New Orleans, the uprising began. Here at this spot, this is the form of Colonel Manuel Andrews Plantation. Today it's called the city of La Platte. On this land, which was about 4,000 acres, the rebels had as their objective the capture of New Orleans to build an independent black republic. This is a powerful revolt involving over 500 Africans from 50 different African nations. Starting at the Audrey Plantation, the enslaved Africans traveled all night and throughout the day, marching from plantation to plantation, 
killing slave owners. Here is the grave of Francois Trepagne, who was one of the most brutal and oppressive slave owners. What's written on his gravestone is very significant. It's written in French. I'm going to read it and translate it. It says, in memory, Francois Trepagne killed by the slaves of 1811. February 10th, 1811. One would ask, why would they put this on his tombstone? They put this on his tombstone, the U.S. militia and his family, as a means to make him a hero. But it backfired. Because every time we bring people here on this tour, people rejoice. They rejoice in the fact that some of these oppressors were taken out. The next day, under the leadership of Manuel Audrey, a territorial militia of roughly 80 men went to attack and take down the African army. But they were outnumbered and defeated. So General Wade Hampton was then dispatched to New Orleans along with the U.S. troops. No, he wasn't dispatched to stop the slave owners and others from exploiting, torturing, raping, killing our ancestors. Nope, he wasn't dispatched to ensure freedom and democracy for all people under this fairly new constitution. No, those proud American patriots under the banner of the red, white, and blue marched in to end any hope of democracy for our ancestors and to place them right back under the oppressive rule of the slave owners and the white power structure. Governor Wade Hampton's army, together with Major Milton at Destrehan Plantation, being well armed, was able to stop the uprising. Some of the leaders were captured, placed on trial, and executed. Their heads were cut off and placed on poles for more than 60 miles along the river in order to frighten and intimidate the other enslaved Africans. So the question is, is this uprising just like so many others in America? Was it successful? Absolutely. They did not achieve their goal of creating a true democracy, but it did show future generations to resist and continue fighting when your civilization is being attacked. Later that year, the Africans rose up, and this was followed in 1812 by a new round of plots and revolts inside the city of New Orleans. Over the next several decades, the resistance escalated until finally the children and the grandchildren of the 1811 revolutionary Africans would triumph and defeat the dictatorship of the slaveholding class in the Civil War. Understand that when any African, whether enslaved or free, fought to liberate themselves, seek land, and come from under European oppression, it jeopardized the very wealth system of what Europeans were creating with this exploitation. And this meant death. So yes, any revolutionary African that put forth an effort to create change by simply having the audacity to fight is considered a success in my book. And all of our ancestors that die trying to create a better situation for themselves and future generations, which includes you and I, deserves our honor and our respect. On to New Orleans, Louisiana's heroic 1811 slave revolt. This book includes in-depth information and documents pertaining to our revolutionary ancestors and their heroic fight for freedom. This is information that you do not receive in school. If you would like a copy of this book, you can go to thegreatgrio.com.